Good morning and welcome to Your Damn Jets. What I want to talk about today is building up a reserve of pills for uh, dealing with accidents or um, things that you cannot predict. Um, first of all, I want to reiterate that I am not a doctor. This is my own opinion on the matter and uh, I do what my insurance company allows me to do. But <clears throat> I'm a fairly strong believer in building up a reserve of pills. And uh, I'm going to give you one good reason uh, later in the video why I do that. Um, so what I'm talking about is you have pills that you take. You know, the pharmacy sends you a number of pills and then you have to renew them. And some people, they wait just... You know, at the end of the, the period that the pills are good for, then they call the pharmacy or they go online and they order new pills. And what I'm suggesting is that you do that as soon as possible. And if you do that as soon as possible, slowly, slowly, you can build up a reserve of pills in your house in addition to the pills that you are currently taking. So, for instance, I know that for most of my pills, not all of them, but most of them, besides the, the stuff that I'm currently taking every day, I have an additional three months of reserve on top of that. So, if there were to be any shortage of pills, of those pills, or if there were, you know, social problems uh, or anything of the sort or shortages... I would be fine for three months with those pills. I cannot do that with everything I have in my house. Uh, the PCS cannon inhibitor, I cannot do that with it because um, Johns Hopkins is on a very tight sh schedule to send them to me. Um, and basically it's like when the when I'm done using the shots I currently have, then two days, two three days later, they call, they they send me an email, I fill it out, and then they start, they start sending me the next shipment. I cannot stock up on on those uh, shots ahead of time. That's the only thing I cannot stock stock up on. I can stock up on everything else, and and the way you do it is slowly, slowly. You know, you just refill your pills as soon as the pharmacy or the insurance company allows it and and then slowly slowly you're going to be able to build up a reserve of pills and this has saved my bacon uh, multiple times um i cannot remember the, i know in the past it has saved my bacon but i don't remember the specific events uh when it happened i know sometimes it was just me being slow a little bit on renewing uh, uh, prescription but it doesn't matter if you're slow to renew a prescription by a few days if you already have a reserve of pills then the pills come and you remake your, your new reserve and you're fine uh, but um, this week I've had a problem with renewing my prescriptions at Johns Hopkins and uh, primary care office over here messed up my renewal in two ways. One of the ways it did mess it up is that it sent one of the drugs that I was renewing and sent the, the prescription to the wrong place and sent it to Weiss instead of sending it to uh, uh, CVS Caremark. And um, I don't know why they did that because I never asked it to be sent to Weiss. And I told them to cancel it and send it to CVS Caremark, but they didn't cancel it twice. They left it there. And now CVS Caremark said they cannot f fill it until, you know, close to one month has passed. It's nonsense. If it had just been that, I would not be complaining right now. And I would not be telling you even to uh, make a reserve of pills. But because they made another mistake, then I decided to come on the air and say, you know, you should build up your reserve of pills for situations like these. And the second problem is that when they renewed at CVS another drug, instead of um, doing what they what I've always done, what has always been done for me, what they've already done, they've renewed it before at Johns Hopkins and they didn't mess it up that time. This time they switched me from generic to brand name and the pharmacy sent me an email saying, well, now you're going to have to pay $120 for... This stuff, and it's, it's complete nonsense. I can 
get it for I don't remember how much I pay. I may be even paying nothing for for uh, if I get it generic. I don't. I just don't remember. You know, I see the bills and sometimes it's this drug cost that thing and that drug cost that thing, and I don't keep them straight in my mind and I don't relate them to one another. So so uh, once we sort the whole thing out, it might be free for me. And now they're saying, well, you're going to pay a hundred so, so dollars. Uh, I told the pharmacy, I'm not, I'm not taking that, but you see, I'm good for whatever remains of the current bottle I'm using of that medicine plus three months. So I don't have to get on the horn and, and start screaming at people or do anything of the sort. What I did is that I wrote a letter to, uh, Johns Hopkins, uh, I don't remember, I think they call it the customer service center, basically the complaint, the complaint line. I, I wrote them a letter, I have time. So I wrote them a letter and I explained what happened. And I said, start it out. Because, you know, one thing, one good way to render your patients non-compliant, you know, if you're a doctor, listen to this. One good way to render your patients non-compliant is to touch, start messing up with the prescriptions. Send the prescriptions to the wrong place. Go from generic to brand name. And you're going to have patients that are not going to do stuff about it. It's like they're going to be confused. You know, I have all my marbles. I've had a lymphoma. It's, it was in the brain. It was in the brainstem, my lymphoma. But I have all my marbles. I, I, I don't have any... Impairment. I make more typos maybe after the lymphoma, but nothing more than that. I'm still able to process financial information and do my taxes, even though I don't do them. <laughs> um, so I have all my marbles. Imagine how it is for people who don't have all their marbles. They're not totally there. And then there's this nonsense that happens with their medicine that is sent to the wrong place. Or, and they don't know what to do with this. Or, or some people are going to get the message and then they're going to forget it. And then they're going to be hit with a huge bill, which is a problem in this country that we have surprise bills. Some of the time the surprise is created by the healthcare system. But some of the time, I'm pretty sure among the, the, the our eldest patients that is just absent-mindedness on their part. You know, everybody told them what was going to happen, but when they got the, the email or the letter saying, well, your cost is going to go up, they put it aside and then they forgot about it. But the, the source of the problem is not them. The source of the problem is the doctor that messed up the prescription. So doctors, if you want your patients to be compliant, write the prescriptions correctly. I'm never going to hear a doctor again talk about patients being non-compliant and think, yeah, that doctor's probably right. Now I'm going to think that doctor probably messed up the prescription and the patient is confused, doesn't know what to do, and now the patient has become non-compliant because the doctor is a, an idiot. That's what it means. And I don't remember the statistics about medical mistakes, but this is a medical mistake. And if patients become non-compliant because of your medical mistakes, that's serious. That's not a joke. You want them to take the pills? Write the prescriptions correctly. I shouldn't have to have three months of stuff at home to prevent this kind of nonsense from happening, but I do it for other reasons, you know. It can be a shortage, and then it's not the doctor's fault if there's a shortage. But because I have it because of the shortages, it does also help me deal with doctors who cannot write prescriptions correctly. It's a side effect of <laughs> my my method of, of keeping uh, my uh, 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 stock of medicines at home. Um so I, I urge you, if you are somebody who needs to take medicine regularly, and I do, I am one of those persons because I have heart disease, 
And uh, right now I'm thinking I I have a little bit of medicine still I'm taking for the lymphoma, but nothing major. Um, but if you're on a schedule and you need to take the medicine regularly, build up a stock so that when there are world-shattering events happening, you're not caught with your pants down. And as a side benefit, it also protects you from doctors who cannot write prescriptions correctly. So, uh, yeah, this was today's rant. Maybe I'm going to have another rant in the afternoon. I don't know. But uh, it was this morning rant, and I was not planning on doing this. But Johns Hopkins managed to mess up, and here we are. So with this, I'll say goodbye.